Utah's compulsory education law requires that parents enroll their children in school. As caretakers of these children, LEAs have a legal and ethical obligation to create a safe and healthy learning environment. The purpose of this training is to provide staff members with information to protect themselves and students from the consequences of failing to maintain appropriate boundaries between themselves and the students. This training addresses a wide range of behaviors and interactions between staff and students, from obviously unlawful or unethical interactions to less obvious boundary blurring behaviors that undermine the professional staff-student relationship and can lead to misconduct or create the appearance of impropriety. School staff members are expected to provide students with appropriate guidance, direction, understanding, and support in a professional manner while acting within accepted standards of conduct. Establishing and maintaining appropriate personal boundaries for staff-student relationships are key to successfully achieving this. Whether driving a school bus, instructing in a classroom, passing in the hallway, assisting at an extracurricular activity, or serving meals in the cafeteria, appropriate personal boundaries between staff members and students must be maintained. Clearly identifying risky behaviors that may lead to inappropriate relationships is the first step in protecting students and staff. Every staff member must establish strong boundaries, stay within those boundaries, and intervene and report when observing others crossing boundaries. The negative consequences of a staff member violating the boundaries of the staff-student relationship are far-reaching. Students' perspectives of appropriate staff and student relationships and trust in adults are compromised. Parent and community trust in school staff and the education system as a whole is damaged. Coworkers are impacted by the negative publicity and discord resulting from a peer's inappropriate contact. Liability for the resulting harm to a student may be placed on the organization and staff member responsible for the misconduct. And last, the staff member may face disciplinary action or termination from employment, licensure action if a licensed educator, and criminal charges depending on the nature of the violation. Utah State Board of Education administrative rule mandates every LEA, which means each school district and charter school, establish a code of conduct applicable to all staff members working in public schools in Utah. The term staff members includes professional staff, support staff, part-time, full-time, permanent, temporary, provisional, contract, and even volunteers who spend substantial unsupervised time alone with students. The code of conduct requires every staff member avoid boundary violations with students. Never subject a student to abuse of any kind, physical, mental, emotional, or sexual. Communicate with students in a professional manner regardless of when, where, or how it takes place. Electronic communications and the use of social media must follow LEA policy and be used for education-related purposes. Never touch a student in a way that makes a reasonably objective student feel uncomfortable. Never discriminate against a student based on race, religion, gender, disability, national origin, gender identity, sexual orientation, or other protected class or characteristic. Never use or be under the influence of alcohol or illegal substances during work hours, at a school activity, or on school property. Never use tobacco products on school property or at a school activity. Finally, staff members have a legal obligation under state statute, this administrative rule, and the LEA Code of Conduct Policy to report suspected violations of this policy or any suspected abuse or neglect. These are the minimum provisions that are required in the policy you are required to be familiar with any additional provisions specific to your LEA. Each of us as individuals sees the world around us in our own unique way. We interpret the events around us, the acts of others, and even our own actions in light of our individual set of experiences. 
For example, one teacher accused of inappropriately touching students responded, I didn't do anything wrong. I come from a really touchy-feely family. That's just how I am. A co-worker, offended by and concerned with the teacher's actions, reported the employee's conduct to an administrator. The co-worker had obviously developed a very different standard of appropriate personal space between a staff member and a student. From his perspective, hands off entirely should be the rule. So, which interpretation of appropriate should we rely on? How do we define where to draw the line? Some actions are clearly identified in laws, rules, and policies. However, where a specific action is not clearly identified, appropriate boundaries for personal interactions between staff and students must be based on common, acceptable, safe, healthy, and productive standards. Personal standards of what is acceptable, such as the touchy-feely standard, must be set aside. In determining whether a person acted appropriately in a given situation, courts have adopted the reasonably prudent person standard. How would a reasonable individual acting with care, wisdom, and concern for the future have behaved if she were in the same position faced with the same set of circumstances? Applied to this code of conduct, what would a reasonably prudent education employee or staff member in the same circumstances view as acceptable? Let's look a little more closely at the areas of conduct and expectations for staff and student interactions. The Code of Conduct requires all staff members avoid boundary violations in their interactions with students. A boundary is a metaphorical line that a staff member must maintain between themselves and a student in order to ensure structure, security, and predictability in the educational environment. A boundary violation is any behavior which crosses this line verbally, physically, emotionally, or socially. It is an act of omission or omission, not having a legitimate educational purpose and may potentially abuse the staff-student relationship. Your LEA's code of conduct identifies specific behaviors which, without any extenuating circumstances, are boundary violations and should be avoided by school staff. The list is not all inclusive. Each LEA may include additional behaviors in its policy which are considered boundary violations in staff-student relationships. With the variety of personalities and activities in, each, in a school each day, it would be impossible to list every situation which may arise. Identifying specific acts and behaviors is intended to help establish a criteria or baseline to assist in appropriately drawing lines for all staff-student interactions. In individual or unique circumstances, the location of the boundary line may vary. Elementary versus secondary student, the type of class or activity, a student's unique disability, or even familiar relationships between staff member and a student may impact whether specific conduct is acceptable. One example of the way specific circumstances may impact the propriety or of an action might be an occupational therapist serving in a preschool serving a preschool child with disabilities. The service provider holds the child around his waist to steady him while working to improve balance. This would be acceptable physical contact. However, a high school English teacher would have no educational purpose in touching a student in the same way. If you have, if you have specific questions, it's always best to discuss them with your supervisor or administrator. One area requiring careful consideration to avoid boundary violations is meeting with a student in isolation. Behaviors which may be considered boundary violations include isolated, one-on-one -on -one interaction with students out of the line of sight of others, meeting with students in rooms with covered or blocked windows, sitting or riding alone in a vehicle with a student, intentionally being alone with a student on campus or away from school, Consciously consider location when meeting with students. If it is necessary to meet with an individual student, meet in a visible location. Keep the door open or request a coworker join you. Consider meeting electronically if no other option exists. This will protect you from the risk of false allegations or assumptions as well as protecting the student. Giving a student undue or preferential treatment is conduct which can raise concerns and cross the line. We work in education because we care about students and learning. 
A caring, positive adult role model can have a positive, lasting impact on a student. Motivating students by encouraging them, rewarding them, and getting them involved shows we care. However, giving preferential treatment to a specific student or group of students, providing gifts or special favors to individual students that are not offered or available to all students, or giving gifts with no educational purpose violates appropriate staff-student boundaries. Taking a student to lunch to talk about things, inviting a student to your home, or regularly writing notes to a particular student crosses the boundaries of the appropriate staff-student relationship. In some instances, it may be the student who is seeking the targeted attention. He or she may be looking to a staff member to be a confidant, friend, or surrogate parent. Although it may be evident that the student is facing personal challenges and may need assistance, when a student seeks attention that is beyond the parameters of the staff-student relationship, it is the staff member's duty to establish clear boundaries. Be kind but firm. For example, a student begins to hang out regularly after class and share the difficulties of divorcing parents. Things are so bad at home, the student asks if he could just go home with you, or maybe he could just text you tonight if things got really bad. An appropriate response may be, I'm concerned about you and I'll do what I can to support you here at school, but I can't be your parent or friend. My place is to be your teacher or advisor or coach. It may be appropriate to refer the student to administrator or counselor for additional support. Referral to youth support programs, such as the Safe UT app, may be appropriate. The Safe UT Crisis Chat and Tip Line is a statewide service that provides real-time crisis intervention to youth through live chat right from their smartphone. This service is staffed by licensed clinicians 24-7 providing supportive or crisis counseling, suicide prevention, and referral services. If a staff member believes that a student's well-being is at risk, state law requires a school employee notify the student's parents without delay. If you are unsure of how to do this, enlist the assistance of a school administrator. If it appears that the student is being abused or neglected, report your concerns to DCFS or law enforcement. In some cases, a staff member may be seeking attention from the student, fostering the relationship to fulfill the staff member's own needs. A staff member struggling with personal problems may find the attention and admiration bestowed by a student provides needed emotional comfort. Being the favorite teacher or coach that every student comes to can sometimes give a sense of empowerment. The staff member may not even realize the personal motivation behind his own actions. When interacting with students, staff members must maintain the integrity of the education setting and honor the trust of students, parents, and the profession. Avoiding pre preferential treatment helps maintain appropriate staff-student relationships. Another type of boundary violation involves physical interactions with students. Touching a student in a way that makes a reasonably objective student feel uncomfortable or physical contact that is unnecessary and unrelated to the performance of professional responsibilities violate the staff-student boundary. Some examples include a staff member initiated frontal hugging, a student sitting on a staff member's lap, a staff member sitting on a student's lap, massaging a student, requesting or allowing a student to give a massage to a staff member, uninvited touching, or unnecessary physical contact with a student is either a public or private situation. A paraprofessional at a high school asked a student to remove himself from her chair so that she could begin working at her computer. When the student wouldn't comply, the paraprofessional sat on the high school student's lap and began working at her computer. Although the student found the actions amusing, the conduct was unnecessary, inappropriate, and had no educational purpose. Other students in the class immediately recognized the inappropriateness of the behavior and recorded the incident on their phone. The video was then posted on the internet and before long the unprofessional conduct went viral. The negative impact went far beyond the staff-student relationship. 
Maintaining professional boundaries does not mean there can never be physical contact of any kind between a staff member and student. Examples of appropriate physical contact include pats on the back or shoulder, side hugs, handshakes, or high fives. There are specific circumstances in the school setting where physical contact is permitted or even required. For example, implementation of a student's IEP or 504 plan may include guided learning activities or related services involving appropriate physical contact. A coach or athletic trainer assisting a student may experience circumstances where physical contact is necessary. Physical contact, when required as part of fulfilling professional responsibilities, is acceptable. However, outside of high fives and pats on the shoulder, when contact is required to assist a student, it's a good idea to ask permission and explain your intentions before initiating a necessary touch. A staff member shall not subject a student to any form of physical, verbal, sexual, or mental abuse. Staff members are in a unique position of having daily access to students. If, in interactions with a student, a staff member suspects a student is being subjected to any type of abuse or is suffering from neglect, the staff member has a legal obligation to report the suspicion to either law enforcement or the Division of Child and Family Services. This includes when another staff member is the individual suspected of abusing the student. When making a report of suspected abuse, you should also inform your school administration of the suspicion and your report to law enforcement or DCFS. Under Utah law, a person who makes a report of suspected abuse in good faith is immune from civil and criminal liability, which could arise from making the report even if the allegations turn out to be unsubstantiated. The next area of conduct requiring purposeful consideration is that of communication between staff members and students. Having a trusted adult in the education setting results in a more productive learning environment. Being friendly towards students is appropriate. However, becoming their best friend is not. Staff members sp spend substantial time with students. Developing relationships with students is a natural outcome of regular interactions with them. In a caring educational environment, the personal lives and stories of students become known through daily conversations with staff members. Staff members become familiar with the students' parents, siblings, home life, dreams, hopes, and failures. Students, likewise, get to know the adult who work with them. Students may learn about the staff member's marital status, children, and outside of school activities through appropriate daily interactions. In some cases, a new teacher or young staff member may be just a few years older than the students. They may share common interests, the same musical taste, and possibly even an overlapping circle of friends. In situations such as this, the staff member may see the students as peers. While developing personal relationships may foster a warm and trusting learning environment, staff members must be diligent in creating clear boundaries to avoid becoming a student's friend, surrogate parent, confidant, or sexual interest. Staff members must maintain professional relationships with students in all interactions, whether on or off duty and on or off school property, including the use of electronic communications and social media. Excessive informal and social involvement with individual students is unprofessional and not compatible with appropriate staff-student relationships. Behaviors that may be seen as crossing the line include engaging in inappropriate or unprofessional contact outside of educational program activities, taking photographs of individual students for a non-educational purpose or use, exchanging personal email or text messages for a non-educational purpose or use, engaging in one-on-one -on -one private communication with a student unrelated to coursework or official school matters regardless of the method of communication. Your LEA may have specific parameters regarding electronic communications with students. In addition to local policies, 
the following general guidelines should always be followed. Text or email between a staff member and student should never be used for communications of a personal nature. When texting or emailing a student, always copy parents, colleagues, or supervisors. Social networking should only be used for instructional purposes and anything posted by a staff member must follow all student privacy laws as well as the LEA policy. Additional communications which cross the boundaries of appropriate staff-student relationships include seeking emotional involvement with a student for the staff member's benefit, counseling a student if you are not a school counselor or school psychologist about non-school or personal issues without written parent permission, becoming involved with a student so that a reasonable person may suspect inappropriate behavior or a staff member discussing their own personal problems or intimate issues with a student. If the student initiates the behavior or communication that is beyond professional boundaries, it is your responsibility as a staff member to stop that behavior and clearly identify appropriate boundaries for the student. If the student persists, you should inform and seek the involvement of parents and administration. Sexual conduct of any kind between a staff member and a student is strictly prohibited. The age of the student is irrelevant. The prohibition applies whether the student is 8 or 18. Likewise, consent is irrelevant. A student's consent to participate in sexual conduct does not make it any more acceptable. A careful examination of numerous high-profile incidents of school staff members becoming sexually involved with students reveals that egregious violations between a staff member and student begin with smaller boundary violations. One after another, the repeated violations blur the boundary line. Inappropriate conversations leading to inappropriate touches leading to sexual misconduct. It is for this reason that the Code of Conduct prohibits any sexual conduct, not just physical conduct of a sexual nature, but any sexual conduct with students. Sexual conduct, even in jest, is clearly a boundary violation. This includes behaviors such as telling risque jokes or stories to, or in the presence of, a student, making or adding to sexually inappropriate comments, sharing with or allowing a student to view any sexually explicit, pornographic, lewd, or otherwise inappropriate image, photograph, or communication, whether video, audio, print, text, or other format. Grooming Behavior generally involves behaviors that, in and of themselves, may appear innocent. Grooming involves an adult engaging in increasingly invasive boundary violations with a student for the purpose of blurring the line between appropriate and inappropriate contact, ultimately leading to emotional abuse, physical abuse, or sexual misconduct with the student. Grooming may include many of the boundary violations just discussed. Physical contact that seems harmless or verbal comments designed to flatter the student become increasingly invasive so that over time, physical contact and inappropriate remarks begin to seem normal. By a steady series of small encroachments, a perpetrator progressively breaks down a child's normal personal boundaries to more easily take advantage of them emotionally, physically, or sexually. As a staff member, avoid activities which may be viewed as grooming behaviors. Some activities that may seem innocent from a staff member's perspective can be perceived as emotional flirtation or sexual insinuation from a student's or parent's point of view. Avoid situations that could prompt suspicion by parents, students, colleagues, or school leaders. Any behaviors which would qualify as sexual abuse or sexual battery are strictly prohibited. The criminal definition of sexual battery includes touching, whether or not through clothing and regardless of the gender, a student's genital area, buttocks, or female breasts, or otherwise taking indecent liberties. 
Likewise, encouraging or allowing a student to engage in these same behaviors towards you as a staff member is prohibited. There may be even times when the student is the one who initiates the inappropriate conduct. However, a student's consent or even initiation of sexual conduct does not make it acceptable. It is the responsibility of the staff member to stop the behavior. Firmly tell the student the behavior is unacceptable and not to do it again. Involve administration and parents, if necessary, to firmly establish appropriate boundaries. A staff member may not discriminate against a student based on a protected class. For the student population, protected classes are defined by characteristics such as gender, race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability. A staff member may not use or be under the influence of alcohol or illegal substances during work hours, on school property, or at a school activity. Use of tobacco on school property and at school activities is also prohibited. This includes the use of all tobacco products as well as e-cigarettes. Finally, every staff member has the responsibility to report suspected violations. You must report suspicions of child abuse or neglect to DCFS or law enforcement, as well as to your supervisor or administrator. You must also report known violations of your LEA's code of conduct. You must report known boundary violations, inappropriate physical or sexual conduct, inappropriate communication, discriminatory conduct, or any issues related to controlled substances. You may gain knowledge of violations through personal observation, from conversations with students or colleagues, or parents, or even from overhearing conversations of others. Follow the reporting procedures established by your LEA. If you are unaware of the process, ask your supervisor or administrator. If your supervisor or administrator is involved in the suspected violation, report to your LEA. You are required to sign an acknowledgement verifying you have been provided training about and understand this code of conduct, including your obligation to report known violations. Following this video, you will be given the opportunity to sign this acknowledgement. Even a well-meaning staff member intent on doing good and caring for students often doesn't see the hazards and risks involved before it's too late. That is why it's critical to establish appropriate boundaries and maintain them. An adult providing support and direction during difficult times can help a student avoid academic failure and a variety of problems. All interactions between staff members and students must occur within the acceptable boundaries of the professional staff-student relationship. If you have further questions, please contact your supervisor or administrator.